Luca Rocca Magnotta is a Canadian murderer. He was convicted of killing and dismembering Lin Jun, a Chinese international student, before mailing his hands and feet to elementary schools and federal political party officers. He then filmed himself committing this and other depraved acts and then sharing it online. This gained him international notoriety. There was a repugnant smell coming out of the suitcase. It had been there for days now. The janitor had noticed it every time he swept out of the alleyway behind the apartment building. Up until then, he'd been able to ignore it, but the smell from inside was getting worse and worse. A choking, stifling stench, like a pig roast left out to rot. But nothing could have prepared him for what he found inside. A man severed torso, the limbs torn off. The other parts of the dead man would eventually turn up throughout the late spring of 2012, but would be found nowhere near the apartment in Montreal. His left foot would show up in a package wrapped up by a Canada Post, delivered to the offices of Canada's Prime Minister. The package, carrying the left hand, on its way to the Liberal Party, would be intercepted just in time, but no one would be able to stop the right side of the body from reaching its destinations. Two elementary schools full of children in Vancouver, British Columbia, both schools would start the day by opening up packages of severed, decomposing human remains. It didn't take long to figure out who'd done it. Luca Magnotta, after all, had filmed his own act of murder. He'd uploaded an 11 minute video of himself hacking Lin Jun to pieces onto a website called Best Score for the whole world to see. So the mystery wasn't much of a question of who had done it as it was a question of why. Luca Magnotta was born Eric Newman in Ontario in 1982. The new name was one he chose himself, a sort of reinvention meant to purge bad memories. He said there was some messed up stuff that happened to him when he was a kid. Nina Arsenault, one of few of Magnotta's few friends, has said, Magnotta, she said, was so disturbed with whatever had hurt him that he'll break into fits of punching himself in the face. It's hard to say what memory was torturing him so horribly. Perhaps it was that his parents abandoned him at the age of 10 and left him with his brutal and domineering grandmother or it might have been something from his teenage years when he was young and bisexual in a small Ontario town. That didn't make that easy. Or maybe it was just plain madness. Magnotta, after all, had inherited paranoid schizophrenia from his father and started hearing voices at the age of 18. Whatever the reason that had left him disturbed, Luca Magnotta had done everything in his power to erase Eric Newman. He'd rebuilt his whole face through plastic surgery and thrown himself into a new life as a male escort and minor porn star. Even his family was worried, as his aunt later said, he was a time bomb waiting to explode. Lin Jun just wanted a friend. He was a 33-year-old international student from China who hadn't quite been in Montreal for a year by the time of spring of 2012. When Luca Mognetta, now 29, contacted him, he was just happy to have a friend. He wanted to find someone with something in common. One of Lin Jun's friends later said he didn't deserve this. Magnotta claimed that the two met on the night of May the 24th after Lynn responded to a Craigslist ad that the former had posted in hopes of finding someone interested in sex and bondage. That night at 9pm, Lynn Jun sent one final text to a friend. The next time anyone saw him was in a video, uploaded to Best Score the next day, carrying the title One Lunatic, One Ice Pick. As the video revealed, Lynn Jun had been stripped naked and tied to a bed frame. While the music of New Order blared through the speakers, Magnotta hacked him apart with an ice pick and a kitchen knife. He then filmed himself both sexually violating and dismembering the body, while also allowing a dog to chew on the body and allegedly even eating parts of it himself. Police have claimed that cannibalism is evident in an extended version of the video that they have reviewed. Luca Magnotta was already being investigated for horrific acts of violence for more than a year before he killed Lin Jun. A group of online sleuths had been working together via Facebook to hunt down Magnotta because he'd uploaded a video of himself killing animals. A year and a half before killing Lin Jun, Magnotta uploaded another video called One Boy, One Kittens, in which he suffocated two tabby kittens to death with a vacuum and a plastic bag. Since then, the online sleuths have amassed an incredible amount of information to bring Magnotta down. They pulled metadata from his animal torture pictures, found evidence of where he was hiding, and shared it all with the police, trying to stop him before he killed a human being. It wasn't difficult to track him down, he'd done everything he could to build up his online presence. 
He created Wikipedia pages about himself twice, created his own fake fan pages, and spread rumours that he was dating serial killer Carla Kamolka. The sleuth hunting Magnotta speculated that he would likewise kill cats for attention. There's this unwritten rule of the internet, it's called Rule Zero, and it's you don't mess with cats, one of the sleuths told Rolling Stone. Another added, what better way to get famous than to fuck with cats? But when these sleuths contacted the police, there wasn't much of a response. As one of the vigilantes recalled, I'm told, it's just cats. They brushed me aside. What else could I have done? In the end, I told them this guy's going to turn around and kill somebody, and they poo-pooed me. Of course, Luca Magnotta did turn around and kill somebody. And once the video of Lin Jun's death was confirmed authentic, police began hunting for the killer. After the janitor at Magnotta's apartment building found the torso, the papers identifying the victim nearby, police checked the building's security footage and saw the victim and the killer entering the building just before the murder. It didn't take long for police to arrive at Magnotta's apartment in the building, where they found blood on the mattress, bathtub, in the refrigerator, and elsewhere. He wasn't there, but they had the killer, and after matching the torso remains with those that had been mailed all over Canada, police also fully knew what had become of their victim. By that point, Magnotta had fled to Paris under his own name, easily allowing authorities to follow his trail. He then took a bus to Berlin, but police kept on his trail and would soon take him down. They found him at an internet cafe in Berlin on the 4th of June. When police came in, Magnotta was googling his own name, reveling in his own fame. Something forced me to do it. It just gave me this weird energy, Luca told a psychiatrist while waiting for his trial to begin. Something just happened to my brain. Magnotta said that he and Lin Jun were lovers, sharing a night together when a black car outside filled him with a conviction that Lin Jun was a secret agent. Tie him up. Cut it. He heard a voice tell him. He said, do it. He's from the government. Then after he slit Lin Jun's throat and chopped up his body, Magnotta said that voices told him, give it back to the government. Hence the mailing of the body parts to the government officers. But it's of course hard to tell if Magnotta is telling the truth. The details and organisation of the crimes, another psychiatrist said, show that Magnotta was having anything but disorganised thought. Instead, other analysts said that Magnotta knowingly committed the crime for the attention, and that for him, the problem was simply that negative attention is better than no attention at all. We may never know for sure what went wrong inside the mind of Luca Magnotta. His jury, though, didn't accept the insanity defence. In December 2014, they found him guilty on all counts and sentenced him to life in prison. But for the family of Lin Jun, Luca Magnotta's punishment will surely never be enough. I will never see his smiling face, said the victim's father, or hear about his new accomplishments, or hear his laugh. Lin Jun's birthday is on December the 30th, and he will never be there for his birthday, or ours.